Okay, very good. Um, we are on the record and we are convened this morning for the case involving James Lucky complainant versus Milwaukee County respondent. The ERD case number is CR 2021-01845 and the corresponding EEOC charge number is 26G 2021-00859C. Today's date is May 22nd, 2023. The hearing is being conducted and recorded via WebEx video conferencing software. I'm Anne Marie Molitor, the administrative law judge who has been assigned to this matter, and it is now 9.31 a.m. All right, at this time, I'm going to ask for the party's appearances, and we'll start with the complainant. Okay, now I can't hear anyone. Water's not in the thing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for and behalf of the complainant is Ben Hitchcock Cross of Cross Law Firm. All right. And Mr. Lucky is with you, I trust. Right. Okay. Very good. And then um, on behalf of the respondent. Oh, let's see if you're muted as well. Yeah, you're muted. Okay. Let's try that again. Good morning, Your Honor. Melinda Lawrence on behalf of Milwaukee County. All right. And um, who is the representative for today? Do you have a representative for the county today? James Novotny is with me today and Rhonda Rogers, my paralegal, is here as well. Okay. All right. So we are here uh, for continued hearing. Now, um, I did receive a uh, motion in limine from the complainant. And I do understand, uh, Attorney Cross, that um, this is a continuing violation theory case. And so, um, of course, we will be hearing some testimony about events that occurred outside the 300 day time period. And I believe we already have heard some um, testimony about the Barbie doll and bees and things like that. So um, I would anticipate hearing additional matters outside the 300 days. Great, there's nothing like appeals court cases, right? <laughs> okay, um, are you ready to proceed at this time? Sure, I have uh, one more thing to note before that. On Wednesday, I got approximately 110 megabytes of um, information from uh, the respondent, uh, most of which were rec audio recordings. Um, I certainly haven't had time to listen to any of those. I'm not even exactly sure what they were. Um, the the information that I have is in re preparing for uh, the hearing today. They came across these documents. Uh, they appear to be um, an internal affairs investigation um, case. Uh, but other than that, I can't say. Okay. Do you have anything to add on that, Attorney Lawrence? Um, certainly, Your Honor. We discovered them Wednesday afternoon. Um, it was part of the missing file that we turned over in January. Uh, we hadn't realized before that there were audio recordings with it. When we discovered them Wednesday afternoon, I turned them over. I've had the exact same time to review them as Attorney Hitchcock Cross has. They are, in fact, the audio recordings that went with the IA case 2299, which is the investigation into Mr. Lucky's June 21st, 2020 email. Okay, thank you. All right. Um... Well, we will deal with that as it comes up. Um, did you have any um, specific requests concerning that right now, Attorney Cross? No, I mean, okay. I, I don't, like I said, I don't really know what's in there. Uh, it's a bunch of audio recordings. Um, so we don't, we don't, we have no idea if that's only online or not. Okay, all right, yeah. very good. Uh, so the first witness that we intend to, uh, that we've subpoenaed and intend to call is uh, Fred Gladney, Frederick Gladney. Okay, and is he here? I don't see him on here. Um, was, I'm assuming he was subpoenaed for today? He's absolutely subpoenaed for today. Okay. Um, Let's see, Attorney Lawrence, do you have any knowledge as to his whereabouts? 
I do not, Your Honor. Um, Sergeant Gladney retired back in January. I have not. This is the first I've heard of the subpoena. We were not given notice of the subpoena. I suppose at this point in time, we'd object to it both on grounds of relevance and for a lack of procedure, us not being made aware of it. Um, but he is no longer with Milwaukee County, so I can't say anything about his whereabouts. All right. Well, um, I don't know what I can do to get him here. Um, he is not. Um, no, I understand. Okay. So for the, at least for the time being, we have our other remedies and we'll see what we have to do with that. Uh, let's go on to Mr. Novotny. Okay, and so you're recalling Mr. Novotny? That's right. Okay, Mr. Novotny, thank you very much uh, for being here today. Um, if you could raise your right hand, I will swear you in. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, go ahead, Attorney Cross. Great. Uh, just before I do, I note that in, uh, Um, no, I think we're ready. Your Honor, if I may briefly interject before we begin. Yes. The county would like to ask for some standing objections. We are hoping that this will help the process go a little faster. If Your Honor would grant standing objections, both on the uncorroborated hearsay, uh, foundation issues, and relevance to everything beyond the August 24th, 2021 filing date. Hopefully, I can skip those objections and just rely on the common sense of work or lurk in reviewing the, the file. To understand why we didn't interject them repeatedly, and I'm hoping that this round will go a little faster. Attorney Cross, do you want to be heard on that? Yeah, well, they certainly did interject them repeatedly. Uh, I have sat here and, and listened to the entire recording, I think, twice now. Um, and uh, there's no question that uh, not only did they raise that objection, and this is, uh, I'm just going to coin this for lack of a better phrase, because I think the uh, appeals court in Abbeyland got it right that a statute of limitations is not an evidentiary rule. Um, there's been several times here uh, that we've had rulings sustained uh, <clears throat> in this hearing already uh, on this basis of the this uh, statute of limitations is an evidentiary rule, um, 300 days. So we managed after some, uh, we got some more evidence in there um, and we put in our burden to get some, some uh, evidence in this window, uh, it's true after we fought for it, but it's also true here uh, that there was uh, extensive um, uh, let's say questions that were prevent we were prevented from asking because uh, of the um, a priori 300 day decision. So, yeah, that's that's clarify. We're not relating to the 300 days going back beyond the filing date. We're, we're referring to the rule prohibiting the ongoing, the, the events going forward. Right, and we did have some discussions about that. And so um, anything that um, occurred after the complaint was filed would have been um, subject to a new complaint. So um, we are, uh, keeping to a, a time frame of events that occurred prior to, what is it, August 24th, 2021? Sure, for acts of discrimination, but not for evidence of those acts of discrimination. Those are two separate things. That is what we're, that is exactly what we're talking about when we say uh, the statute of limitations is not an evidentiary rule. So the fact that uh, within the 300 day time period, uh, harassment or discreet acts of uh, discrimination are alleged, that does in no way bars any discussion of things outside of the 300 days uh, to substantiate or give evidence uh, in support of those um, claims of dis uh, discrimination. That's the law. It's not common sense. That's the law. Well, I'm uh, concerned more with the events that led up to the filing of the complaint. Um, and I don't really want to go into any of the events, any of the discrete acts that occurred afterward um, in terms of uh, an extensive amount of testimony. Well, I got that, but we got to be clear here because um, there is uh, the complaint happens 
<laughs> then uh, there is more retaliation that happens after that. And we want to get that evidence and not be barred as we have already been from getting that on the record. So I, I get that, but uh, I think we're all clear, especially those who have digested uh, the motion and lemonade. Okay. Then um, it's understood uh, what the uh, objections are from the county. Um, so um, the standing objections are noted for the record. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do notice that um, well, Sarah Byers had joined us, but now I think she is gone again. So um, I don't have to worry about sequestration. Okay. Right. Okay, are you ready, Mr. Novotny? Certainly. Okay, appreciate it. So, um, at when did you learn uh, that Mr. Lucky filed an ERD complaint? I don't remember. Okay. And who is Mary Yu? Mary Yu is the office manager who works in professional standards. Okay. And you know Mary Paul as well? I do. Okay. Who's that? Um, she, is, she is the human resource um, liaison assigned to the sheriff's office. Okay. And um, do you know if Mr. Lucky was walked out of the sheriff's department? Uh, Pending, I guess, uh, charges at any time? Yes, he was. Okay. And how do you know that? Um, that happened as a result of an um, internal affairs investigation um, in which the sheriff decided to separate him from employment, and I was assigned to uh, internal affairs or professional standards at the time. Okay. Did you walk him out? I did not personally walk him out, no. But you knew about it beforehand, right? Yes, I did. Okay. And you know when about that happened? Um, I believe it was sep September of 2021, if memory serves. Great. Did you learn about the ERD complaint before or after that? I don't recall when I learned about the ERD complaint. So I'm not sure. Okay. So at any time, did the corporation council ask you to gather documents in response to the ERD complaint? Me personally? Great. You or anybody, uh, are you aware of the corporation council asking any sheriff's department employees uh, to assemble documents in response to Mr. Lucky filing ERD complaint. I'm sure they would have been in contact with um, Mary Yu as referenced earlier. Okay, and you supervise her, right? Correct. Okay. Now, does she just give documents? They is, is uh, are you in the loop here, uh, so to speak? Generally, no. What does generally no mean? Well, I guess we should clarify what what do you mean by in the loop? Fair enough. Are you aware of uh, these requests that go to Mary Yu? I'm aware that she gets them. I'm not aware specifically of every request that she gets. Okay, but you're aware of some of them, right? Yes. Okay, why are you aware of some of them? I'm not certain. Some might be funneled to me. Um, maybe she she would discuss some with me. Oh, okay. It's not a blanket yes or no situation. Great. Did you discuss Mr. Lucky's complaint with Mary Yu at any time? In the three years or so that it's been filed, I'm certain we have. Okay. When did that happen? I have no recollection. What well, what did you discuss with her? At various points, which I can't identify when, I was aware that she was 
providing or had provided some information to uh, regarding the matter. But again, I don't know when that happened. Okay. So it's normal, is it, that uh, the Corporation Council asks your uh, direct subordinates for documents and that you're not aware of it? It actually is. That's one of her primary job duties. It's to gather documents for the Corporation Council? It's an important role, yes. Good. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Did you discuss, uh, and I'm, I'm using the term walked out. Um, do you have a better term for uh, what happened to Mr. Lucky? No, that's, I understand what you mean by that. Okay. Did you have any discussions with anybody uh, about Mr. Lucky being walked out prior to Mr. Lucky being walked out? No. Okay. But you were aware of it happening before it happened, is that right? Shortly before it happened, correct. And, and how did you become aware of it? Because I was present when the sheriff made the decision to separate him from employment, which was only moments or minutes before it actually occurred. Okay. And I'm sorry, we're talking about uh, sheriff, the 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 previous sheriff, right? Um, can you remind me of who, what sheriff we're talking about? Sheriff Ernell Lucas. Thank you, Sheriff Lucas. Okay, he made the decision to separate Mr. Lucky prior to him being walked out. Correct. When did that? Uh, when did that happen? Uh, sometime September 2021, I believe. Okay. And um, what was the reason for terminating Mr. Lucky? There was a sustained um, sexual harassment and other work rule violation, a misconduct case against him and that was uh the case that the sheriff heard and made a decision to separate him for okay now was there any discussion at that meeting about uh a, a mr lucky's complaints uh about retaliation from internal affairs i don't recall if there was okay how about mr lucky's race complaints I don't recall if there was discussion about that. Okay. And you knew about those complaints at that time, right? I don't know if he had filed a complaint at that time. I don't recall. I was aware of that, of when that happened. Well, in fact, at that time, you had met with Molly Zillig and Mary Paul to discuss his complaints, didn't you? If you're... And and I was present at the last the last hearings where um, you interviewed Ms. Paul, and if that's what you're talking about, I don't re recollect meeting. I don't recall that meeting, but I, I believe that it happened. Okay, but in fact, there's several meetings that happened, right? I don't know if there were several meetings. Okay, <clears throat> so because you were here, you saw Ms. Paul uh, that she had notes, correct? I recall that, correct. Right, in those notes, she identified having several teams meetings with you, Molly Zillig, and herself. I recall that there was reference to one. I don't. I don't recall if there were reference to more. Okay, and you're saying you don't recall having that meeting? Is that what you're saying? I still don't recall that meeting, correct? 
Do you believe she made it up? I don't. I don't believe she made that up. Why not? Because I have no reason to think she would. I, she's a, a credible person. Now, at that meeting with the sheriff, did you ever discuss uh, Sergeant Gladney's threats against Mr. Lucky? I don't recall. I believe that was part of a set on entirely separate hearing. Okay. At that meeting with the sheriff, did, uh, when the sheriff decided to terminate Mr. Lucky, did you uh, ever discuss or hear discussion about Sergeant Gladney calling uh, Mr. Lucky nigger? Again, I feel like that was part of a separate hearing. Okay, and what do you mean by separate hearing? A, a separate disciplinary meeting with the sheriff. Okay, and so is it fair to say that that was the fact uh, that Sergeant Gladney called Mr. Lucky nigger, that that was not raised at that meeting? I hesitate to say either way because I, I can't recall if it was or not. Okay, when was the um, fact brought to, uh, well, let's put it like this, when were these discussions about the fact that Sergeant Gladney called Mr. Lucky nigger? I'm sorry, what, what? Were they before or after the decision to terminate Mr. Lucky? Are you asking when? I, I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay. Maybe I can uh, make it more clear. You explained to me that you just heard, had discussions or you were in a meeting with discussions with the sheriff in which there was discussions about Mr. Gladney calling Mr. Lucky nigger and if I may, Mr. Uh, Gladney threatening Mr. Lucky, right? That I believe would have been part of investigation of which Mr. Gladney was subject. And I believe that took place after the meeting regarding um, Mr. Lucky's separation. I appreciate that. Okay. Now, when did you first learn that Sergeant Gladney called uh, Mr. Lucky Nigger? I can't recall specifically. Well, other than very vague time frame, I, I don't recall. Okay, was it before or after uh, this, the sheriff made the decision uh, to terminate Mr. Lucky in your presence? I don't recall. Well, you're the head of internal affairs, right? Yes. Okay. Did internal affairs ever investigate uh, the uh, Mr. Lucky's allegation uh, that he made to internal affairs that um, Mr. Gladney called him nigger? It did. Okay. And just to back up, how about when Mr. Lucky complained to HR that uh, Mr. Gladney called him nigger. Did you investigate them? I believe it would have been probably part of the same incident, the same investigation. Right, but two complaints, right? I don't recall that he made that complaint to HR. I'm not saying he didn't, but I don't recall it, so I don't know. 
Well, you call discussing it with Molly Zillig and uh, Mary Paul. I don't. Okay. Now, why would uh, Miss Paul write on August 16, 2021, Lucky and Gladney are ordered not to have contact with each other unless in passing or absolutely necessary? I don't know what precipitated her writing that. Okay. Then why on August 16th of 2021 would Mary Paul write IA case open for both? Because she probably, well, from the way that's worded, she learned that internal affairs investigations were opened. Okay. And I it just, when you said internal affairs investigations, that was plural, right? Yes, and I'm sorry, I just lost half power, um, including all vi video to my, uh, in my office here. Although I can still hear you. I can still see you. Uh, Judge, I understand there's people waiting to be let in. I don't know if this is a good time to um, check that. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Trying to log in here. There, I'm back, I'm, I apologize. That's the first time I've ever seen it go that way, but that, that was kind of exciting. All right. So, um, the point I was trying to get at was, I was there at this time on August 16th, internal affairs investigations open to Mr. Gladney and to Mr. Lucky? I believe that, that the time frame makes sense, August, um, and the fact that I, I apparently told Mary Paul, that they were, then yes, there were investigations opened uh, regarding both of them. Okay, why would there be an investigation opened in Mr. Lucky when Mr. Gladney uh, threatened to assault Mr. Lucky and call Mr. Lucky nigger? I believe there were peripheral rule violations that were identified during that matter. In a retaliatory fashion? No. Who identified these uh, additional rule violations by Mr. Lucky after Mr. Lucky made a complaint? The I believe Captain or then Lieutenant now Captain Brent Smoot would have done so. Oh, when did he become a captain? Um, a few weeks ago. Oh, congratulations, Mrs. Smoot. Well, so who runs internal affairs now? I do. Okay. With Miss Zillett, right? She's my supervisor. Okay. So what were these additional issues that were raised into Mr. Lucky? Can you identify them? Yeah, I think vaguely um, there were some issues with like surreptitious recording, I believe, was at least one of the issues. I'm not certain if there were more off the top of my head. Okay. So, for example, uh, the fact that Mr. Lucky uh, recorded his uh, the threat uh, that Mr. Gladney uh, made against them. Is that something that we're talking about? Yeah, the man, the manner in which it was recorded, I believe, and I, I believe there are also threats that uh, Mr. Lucky made to Mr. Gladney during that. Oh, time. what were those threats? Can you tell us that? Um, I seem to recall not not exactly. I can't be quoted. I, I you know, but I seem to recall it was something like "bring it, bring it on, old man," or something like that. Oh, okay. But, that's, a, that's a threat? That was to Mr. Gladney. Ah, uh, okay.
Just one second. I understand that Mr. Gladney is looking for the link here. Um, so I, I, just give me a second. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Okay. Now, did you learn in the course of your investigation whether or not Mr. Lucky felt uh, after you threatened him? Um, you froze briefly during that question, so. I didn't hear all of it. I'm sorry. So, um, did you learn at any time during your investigation whether or not Mr. Lucky felt unsafe working at the sheriff's department after his supervisor threatened to assault him? Yeah, I think he mentioned that in his interview with um, Lieutenant Smoot. Okay. And when it says Lucky and Gladney are ordered not to have contact, do you know who ordered uh, Lucky and Gladney not to have contact? It came from this office um, through Lieutenant Smoot to their divisional commanders. And, and who authorized Smoot to give them that order? I would have. Okay. You know about this on at least August 16th of 2021, right? I would think so, at least enough to, to take that action. Okay. So it's fair to say then, based on that testimony, that you knew about this uh, during the meeting with uh, the sheriff in which the sheriff decided to terminate Mr. Lucky, right? Sorry. I'm hearing other. Yeah, I am too. It's not coming from me. I don't think. I don't know who was talking. Seems like it solved itself. So let's if, do you hear anything? Great. All right. So. Do you recall the question? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, and yeah, based on the time frame, I would have known about that prior to that. Okay. Yes. And uh, these allegations from the hospital uh, that uh, the sheriff recommended Mr. Lucky be terminated based on, are you familiar with those allegations? Yes, I am. And you investigated those, right? Yes. Okay. Now, when uh, did that uh, incident uh, that allegedly took place at that hospital. When did that take place? Um, I feel like uh, I could. I I feel like June of that year. I could be wrong. Okay, and that would have been before August sixteenth, right? Yes. Yes. If I'm right about June, June is before August. Okay. Now, did you get uh, read the email from Christine Baker uh, just to Douglas Holton um, describing Doug, Deputy Lucky saying that he felt unsafe at work? Yes. Okay, and how did you read that? I am. I believe she copied Lieutenant Smoot with that email. Okay. 
And then after meeting with uh, you, Mr. Holton, uh, and Molly, uh, man, we all kind of lucky about uh, him feeling safe going back to work, right? I, you froze up again for a bit in the middle, so I'm weary of. I think I understand. Sure. Your I'm not sure. After you all met to discuss the complaint uh, that Mr. Lucky had said that he felt unsafe going to work, after you discussed that with Ms. Paul, then Ms. Paul went to Mr. Lucky and discussed with him whether he felt safe going uh, to work, right? I believe so. Okay. And that's because that was the decision that was uh, um, that Molly Zillig made at the meeting uh, that happened with you, Molly Zillig, uh, Mr. Holton, uh, and Ms. Paul, right? I don't know what decision Molly Zillig may or may not have made that you're referring to. Okay. Well, do you know why Mary Paul went after that meeting went and called Mr. Uh, Lucky to discuss whether or not Mr. Lucky felt safe coming to work? I could only guess that that's just the course of business for her. If somebody makes a complaint, she follows up with them. Okay. And you didn't discuss that at that meeting to your recollection? I don't recall what was discussed at that meeting, so no. Okay. Now, on August 30th, you reviewed a complaint that Mr. Lucky filed against Sergeant Gladney with Molly Zilla, right? I don't know. Okay. Do you think Mary Paul is lying when she wrote that down in her notes? No. Okay. Is that something you normally do? Is discuss HR complaints with Molly Zillig uh, and Mary Paul? It's not an uncommon thing. Okay. And did he also make a complaint against internal affairs? Did, I'm sorry, did he also make a complaint? Fair enough. I appreciate that guidance for the record. Did Mr. Lucky also make a complaint in his complaint to HR that internal affairs retaliated against him every time he makes complaints to internal affairs? I don't recall specifically, but it surprised me. Okay, and you run internal affairs, right? Yes. So you were one of the subjects of this complaint, right? I don't know. I didn't make the complaint. Okay. But the complaint, you do know that the complaint that was made to HR was dropped by HR because your office uh, was going to investigate, right? It seems that from Mary Paul's notes and testimony that she felt satisfied that we were aware of his complaint of feeling unsafe and had taken appropriate action to do so. And Mr. Lucky even at the time indicated that he was satisfied with that. After How do you know that? That's what he reported to Sergeant Baker. And how do you know that? She documented that in her email. Okay. How about when Mr. Uh, Gladney was a supervisor? Did he feel safe then? Potentially not, which is why we separated them. Okay. You separated them, right? I was not physically. I was part of the decision to do so, though. Oh, who else was part of that decision? Lieutenant Smoot. How about Molly Zillig? Very likely. In fact, she was, wasn't she? Potentially, very likely. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Tell me what steps you took to investigate uh, Mr. Lucky's complaints against you. Not quite sure how to answer that. I'll keep that in mind for future reference. Is um, Attorney Hitchcock Cross's feed frozen? No. Oh, no, okay. Just waiting for an answer. I heard an answer. Did anybody else hear it? Not hear it? Yes, I, I answered. I thought he did as well. He's not sure how to answer my question. Okay, why aren't you sure how to answer my question? I don't really fully understand it. Okay, what about my question? Don't you fully understand? What was your question again? What steps did you take to investigate Mr. Lucky's complaint against yourself? I don't recall receiving that complaint. Okay. But recall receiving a complaint that Mr. Lucky made about uh, HR mm -hmm. retaliated against or in, internal affairs retaliated against him when he makes uh, complaints to them. I, you, you're breaking up in the middle of Do that. you recall Mr. Lucky making complaints about internal affairs retaliating against him when he makes complaints to internal affairs um i think that it's a technical issue not a rate of speed or volume of speed issue um when you freeze up but i recall that he mentioned numerous times he he, he made it clear he wasn't happy with internal affairs he never thought internal affairs investigations were conducted properly because he always um generally was found uh, to have sustained rule violations. So he felt that it wasn't because of any misconduct. Okay, and and generally part. found to have sustained rule violations after he complained to internal affairs, right? I'm sorry, you interrupted me, so I didn't hear the beginning of that. He was found to have uh, rule violations were sustained against Mr. Lucky only after he complained to HR, right? I highly doubt that, but I'm not aware of the time frame. Okay. So it's fair to say you didn't take any steps to investigate Mr. Lucky's complaints of retaliation when he went to uh, uh, internal affairs with complaints, right? It, if you're asking if I investigated myself, because that was an absurd accusation if made. No, I did not investigate myself. Okay. But you were also in the position to know that it was uh, absurd, right? Yes. Okay. And you didn't have anybody else. Uh, let's say you didn't recuse yourself from making that decision on that basis, right? Correct. Okay. Did you discuss his allegations with Molly Zillig at any time? I don't recall.
Did you not hear my question? I heard you ask if I discussed something with Molly Zillig and I said, I don't recall. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, did you learn that uh, Deputy Lucky was making his own no contact rules in regards to the Sergeant Byers? I don't, that doesn't sound familiar. Okay, but if Mary Paul wrote that in her notes uh, after uh, her note saying that she re received the complaint and reviewed it with Molly and Captain Novotny, would you think she was lying? No. No, okay. Now, were you aware of any issues with the union representing Mr. Lucky with regard to uh, the internal affairs investigation against Mr. Lucky? Yes. What were those issues? I don't know the intricacies of them because the union issues are completely separate, but um, so I just have a very general understanding that there was a feeling of conflict of interest, perhaps. Okay, and that's because Mr. Gladney was the union president, right? Yes. Okay, and that's because Mr. Gladney was also the person who was threatening to assault Mr. Lucky, right? As yeah, there was no that, that, that situation was pretty mutual. Um, I seem to recall Mr. Lucky threatening to fuck you up, old man, um, regarding Mr. Gladney. So okay, is Mr. Lucky Mr. Gladney's supervisor? Um. No, he wasn't. No, okay. Now, did Mr. Lucky call uh, Mr. Gladney nigger at any time? I don't recall. Okay. Now, Mr. Lucky, was uh, he ever disciplined uh, for anything regarding this? Uh, or let's say just investigate. Was he ever investigated for making any threats against Mr. Gladney? Yes. Oh, okay. And for recording Mr. Gladney too, right? Correct. So does a union normally provide an attorney to a uh, deputy who's under investigation? Commonly. And, and just to be clear, does the uh, Sheriff's Department Internal Affairs uh, section, does they believe that nigger is a racist comment or something else? I don't know what the division believes. I'm. I don't know if I'm qualified. To You're answer. in charge of this office, right? I I think it is. Yes. Okay. And you thought that on August 30th of 2021, right? I would think so. Okay. Now, the next day, Mary Paul calls. Mr. Lucky and Mr. Lucky tells her that he files an ERD complaint, right? Possibly. Well, you discussed it with her, didn't you? Are you referring to her, the meeting with her notes? As discussed earlier or something else? This is the meeting. So this is there's the first meeting. And then she learns on August 31st, because Lucky tells her 
that he filed an ERD complaint. When did you learn that Mr. Lucky filed an ERD complaint? I still don't remember when I learned that. Okay. Did you discuss it with Molly Zillig at any time? Probably things like that would be something we'd talk about. Okay. Because Mary Paul called Molly directly after her uh, telephone call with uh, Mr. Lucky in which she informed her about the, him filing an ERD complaint, right? No, no. Did you, did, didn't you discuss that with Molly Zillig? I don't remember what I discussed, if anything, with Molly Zillig. Okay. Now, did you know that Mr. Lucky was having problems getting an attorney? That sounds familiar. We, I believe Lieutenant Smoot um, kept extending the uh, timeline for an interview to help accommodate that and even offer to get him off of work to help him find counsel. Okay, but if the union president hadn't threatened to assault him or called him nigger, he would have had an attorney, right? I assume they probably would have represented him. You knew that, didn't you? I knew what? You knew that because Frank Gladney called Mr. Lucky nigger, that Mr. Lucky didn't have a union attorney. Well, I don't remember what I, I mean, in cases, there are allegations, so I don't remember what I knew about the use of that term as fact or not, and when I might have known it. So I don't know okay. really if I'm qualified to answer the question about Mr. Lucky's union representation. I feel I'm not. Well, you knew that because uh, that there was a conflict of interest and the union was citing a so-called conflict of interest with Mr. Lucky, that he was having problems giving him, getting an attorney and needed to get an extension from you, right? Correct. And he told you that, right? He told Lieutenant Smoot. Okay, and Lieutenant Smoot told you that, right? Yes. How many times did you give him? Uh, so he had to get, this is Mr. Lucky, had to get his own attorney to defend himself. Okay, well, that all makes sense then. But so it's fair to say that while this is going on, as of at least August 31st, you personally knew that Mr. Lucky was out in the cold in terms of union representation, right? The timeline seems, I was aware that he was having issues with union representation. I, I don't know the timeline right now. Okay. I don't see now normally, excuse me, sir, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm done. Let's just be clear what those issues were. So normally a deputy has an attorney that represents him, right? Most people don't come into our office with attorneys. Well, does the union provide representation or something else? Often a deputy will come in with a union board member as a representative. Okay. Very rarely does somebody bring in an attorney. Now, what happens if there's a PRB charge filed against somebody? Do they get an attorney from the union or something else? They would do whatever they want to do with that. I mean, that's an individual decision. Okay.
So it's your testimony that with regard to specifically the lucky complaint that the corporation council uh, went to the uh, to your secretary without your knowledge uh, regarding getting documents for Mr. Lucky's uh, ERD complaint. I can't swear it was without my knowledge that um, my office manager um, handled the requests. I, I don't recall. Okay. And this is the same office then that eventually walks Mr. Lucky out, right? Professional standards, yes. Okay. So it's fair to say that the same day that uh, the next, the day after professional standards is collecting documents in response to Mr. Lucky's ERD complaint uh, is the day that the sheriff makes a decision to terminate him, right? I, without seeing a timeline of dates in front of me, I don't think I can answer that. I don't know. Well, you know, the day he was walked out was the 16th, right? 16th of September, 2021. That sounds correct. Okay. And you have personal knowledge of that, right? Yes. And you also have personal knowledge that uh, Miss Paul read out that Miss uh, Lawrence here and the Corporation Council asked her uh, Ms., uh, and others to gather documents in response to Mr. Lucky's ERD complaint on September the 15th of 2020. I'm sorry, your question was, did I know that happened? You heard Miss Paul say that, didn't you? I don't recall hearing that. I don't know. Bear with me, I'm sorry. So at one hour and 37 minutes, uh, Ms. Paul says, okay, it looks like Corporation Council has requested documentation. And then it was there an email that Mary Yu would gather the information that was separate from professional standards, but would be sending along my materials, as well as that a general uh, Corporation Council's email, or was there a specific person at uh, Corporation Council? That's my question. It says, based on the email, it was sent to a few individuals in Corporation Council, right? Who are those individuals, I asked. Uh, but based on part of the individual, there's different people in, uh, involved, and I asked, so name them all, please. And she says, Catherine West, Melinda Lawrence, William Davidson, Scott Brown, and Steph Mackey. If we go up, uh, to seven minutes and 17 seconds, uh, she says, uh, I sent it to Mary Yu, an employee in the Professional Standards Division on September 15th of 2021. Okay. Anybody else? No. 
okay. And what day was that? September 15th of 2021? Yes, uh-huh, that's September 15th. Okay. So based on that testimony from uh, Ms. Paul, does that uh, refresh your recollection of whether or not uh, you, um, the Professional Standards Division was collecting information uh, in response to the request from the Corporation Council after Mr. Lucky filed an ERD complaint uh, the day that uh, the uh, sheriff decided to terminate Mr. Lucky. I would say it doesn't refresh my recollection because it doesn't, but I heard what you read. I heard, I heard okay. the frame. But you witnessed that Ms. Paul give uh, that testimony, right? I recall her saying that, yes. Okay. Now, When you were at this meeting where the decision was made to terminate Mr. Lucas, sorry, when Mr. Lucas made the decision to terminate Mr. Lucky, did you tell him that, in, that uh, Mr. Lucky had filed an ERD complaint? Not that I recall. Okay. But you did give him these charges that had occurred from June. Is that right? That disciplinary hearing was for that case and it started in June of 2021, then yes. And Molly Zillig sustained those charges, didn't she? The sheriff only sustains cases. So she didn't. Well, Molly Zillig took it up the next step, so I won't quibble with uh, vocabulary with you, but she signed off on those charges, didn't she? She may have signed off that it, the case opened, but she doesn't sign off at anything along the way. She forwards okay. she, she forwards paperwork, but she doesn't. And she knew there was an ERD complaint, didn't she? Prop. I don't. I, I don't know. What, I don't know when she knew what she knew. Uh, okay. I don't think I can speak for her. And then that went to uh, the chief deputy, right? Which what went to the chief deputy? The allegations against Mr. Lucky not his allegations of harassment or retaliation by uh, internal affairs. After the case was completed, it would have passed through the deputy review, correct? Okay. So all of the people who sent it along approved, let's put it like this, people who approved the charges going to the sheriff knew that Mr. Lucky filed an ERD complaint, right? Potentially. Okay. And you knew that uh, they didn't discuss that in this meeting with Mr. Lucky, right? About Mr. Lucky in which the sheriff decided to terminate, it, right? I think I said I don't recall it being discussed. Okay. Did you raise that issue at any time? I don't recall if it was discussed. Did you raise the issue of uh, Frank Gladney calling Mr. Lucky nigger at any time? at any time during that meeting right on the 16th of september i don't know so the sheriff had signed charges in his hands that were signed by people who knew that mr lucky had filed an erd complaint right possibly possibly okay Now, did you discuss during this meeting to terminate Mr. Lucky, uh, his complaints against uh, Ms. Byers any time? In this matter, I, probably not, but I don't recall. Okay. How about Mr. Lucky's allegations that Ms. Byers assaulted him? You'll, I, I don't even know what incident you're talking about. Uh, you're not aware of Mr. Lucky claiming that Sarah Byers slammed the door on him. 
Oh, that I am aware of. Yes. Okay, that's a, you're a, you're a sworn law enforcement officer, aren't you? Yes. Okay, and you know what assault is, right? Yes. Okay, slamming a door on somebody would that be assault or something else? She didn't slam the door on him. That, I, Can you answer my question, please, sir? I'm sorry. What was your question again? Is slamming a door on somebody assault or something else? If you hit somebody with the door, I suppose it could be, yes, yeah, some various level of assault, but he was not struck by anything in that incident. It, potentially his feelings were hurt. Okay. And that's another incident of him alleging that a supervisor, or that this is a case of him alleging a supervisor had actually assaulted him. Is that right? I would disagree with that because he wasn't assaulted. He felt he was he was upset that he felt she closed the door when she didn't hold the door open for him. Okay, and you don't believe it was any contact between uh, the door and Mr. Lucky? Absolutely not. And a witness, a witness to that feet away observed that there was zero contact, and he wasn't even close to the door. And he then proceeded to go on a, a essentially a tirade of insubordination um, relative to Sergeant Byers. Okay, so that's another situation where Mr. Lucky makes a complaint against a supervisor. And then, in fact, the allegation of uh, insubordination against Mr. Lucky is investigated, right? Absolutely. Okay, and Mr. Lucky's complaint is not substantiated, right? In that situation, it was not, no. Okay. But that's also was the situation when Mr. Lucky was terminated too, right? I don't, I don't see the correlation, I guess. Okay. Well, Mr. Lucky uh, was being investigated for recording Mr. Gladney, right? That case I don't believe even was went did go to a disciplinary hearing. Investigated is the word I use. Is that accurate or something else? I thought you said separated or terminated. While the decision to be uh, for him to be terminated was made. Mr. Lucky was being investigated for recording Mr. Gladney, right? I think so. Okay. And then when he complained uh, that he was ordered while on light duty to uh, I guess interact with a, a do a, a, an accident report. That's what it was. Uh, he was also then investigated for insubordination, right? Correct. But you gave him a pass, right? I didn't um, personally. Um, then Chief Deputy Danita Ball, you could say, gave him a pass on it. Although uh, the conduct he exhibited was insubordinate clearly, and his captain, Charles Stowers, referred it for investigation for insubordination. The chief deputy Ball decided to uh, not pursue discipline in that matter. Right, but he can, uh, let's say, Mr. Lucky is required to follow lawful orders, right? Yes. Okay, and it's not insubordination if the order is not lawful, right? Not necessarily. I mean, attitude, demeanor, um, yelling at supervisors, um, things like that are relevant. But that's a different county rule, right? That's part of insubordination. There are different aspects of insubordination. Mm -hmm. But that's a count. When you uh, write up and go to the PRB on somebody, uh, for yelling at their supervisor. 
what county rule do you uh, I I see what for? Yes, that's uh, it's a sub K of the civil service rules. Sub K. So yes, it could be a different. So for those of us who aren't familiar with sub K and the PRB, can you explain that to us, please? Um, only that, only to the extent that uh, the civil, there are various civil service rules that uh, are apply to all county employees um, that we apply in addition to our own internal agency policies and procedures. Sub K is one of them. It's not insubordination, is it? It's referred to as a refusal or refusal or fail to follow orders, of supervisor, written or verbal i think okay and again uh, ordering somebody to do something contrary to their uh fmla restrictions uh that's now the light duty restrictions that's not uh, a lawful order right well captain stowers at the time i interviewed him for that case testified that the rules that they had the most updated work rules and restrictions would not have limited lucky from performing that task and that's why they did ask him to do so okay was that the right work rules or the wrong ones for what for mr lucky the right work rules did they have the accurate light duty restrictions uh that, based on your investigation they had the most recent ones that he had provided them up to that point Okay, and somehow those didn't provide that he was uh, supposed to be uh, without a gun or a, ba uh, a badge, et cetera? No, it just said, I, I believe his restrictions were something to the effect of he should be sedentary whenever possible. He didn't okay. say he couldn't walk or anything like that. Okay, and based on your understanding of sedentary whenever possible, that means he can walk? Sure. Okay. Sedentary means sitting, right? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So again, this situation, he makes a complaint and then he's investigated for insubordination, right? I don't recall. I believe the complaint I received was from his supervisor, Captain Stowers. Well, didn't Mr. Lucky complain that he was being uh, put? Oh, because he complained to HR. Ah, okay. I got Now, do you know how Mr. Gladney left the department? He retired. Do you know under what circumstances? No. Do you believe it's in relation to Mr. Lucky? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Now, do you believe that sheriff department employees know that if they complain to HR about internal affairs that HR is going to immediately tell internal affairs? I don't know. I believe it. I don't know what everybody knows. I believe it says, I believe they're informed that Complaints are generally referred back to internal affairs. I, I can't say what people are told when they call HR. Okay. So, when did you start investigating the hospital incident? Shortly after it occurred. Okay, but then you didn't terminate Mr. Lucky, did you? Okay. There was no decision to terminate Mr. Lucky until after he filed the ERD complaint?
I guess I'm not sure what the question is there. So you investigated the hospital incident shortly after it occurred back in June. But the decision to terminate Mr. Lucky wasn't made by the sheriff until after Mr. Lucky filed the ERD complaint, right? Maybe the only answer I have for that is that generally investigations take months from initiation to when discipline is issued. Judge, if you're just, I'm going to go on mute here, or maybe we should just take five minutes, uh, but maybe we're done. Okay. Uh, it is 1046. Let's um, go till 1051. Was that enough time for you? Okay. Let's take five.